The single most successful YouTube video ever put out was on Should You Learn C++ in 2016? It was funny to me because I just threw it out there because people were asking. And the first line, I think, in that video, I said, I never written commercial code in C++. And then I go on. And then a lot of people attacked me and said, how could you comment on C++ if you've never written code commercially? I did Hello World. That's pretty much it. Well, I can comment on it because I'm a professional software developer for over 20 years. And I've written software in nine different languages, commercial software. And so I have a pretty good idea what the market is like, generally speaking. So if I've driven, you know, ten, nine different types of uh, race cars, but I haven't driven the 10th, I can still comment on the 10th type of race car. If I've never driven the Maserati, uh, but, you know, I know enough about cars at this point. I know about enough about racing, and I, I'm sure I would have heard a lot about what the Maserati cars are like relative to the other nine types of cars I've driven, but I can comment on that. Same thing with C++. No, I've never written C++ code before in a commercial sense, but I know what C++ is all about, and I understand the market because I understand software development, and I understand that market. Now, is C++ still a viable option in 2018? Well, we're two, thousand, two months away from 2018, for sure. Uh, C++ is going to be viable, I would imagine, for at least another 10 years. Although I'm hearing from people, friends of mine who are C++ coders, are saying it's getting pretty messy because they're constantly trying to retrofit C, C++ to make it be able to uh, follow the paradigm du jour, the current hot way of writing code. And they're saying, he's telling me, that's his opinion, it's a bit of a mess now. C++ will have its place for quite a while, I would imagine, longer because it's highly, highly performant. Uh, so you're going to see it being used to build gaming engines and uh, writing low-level type of speed-centric apps, maybe AI type of engines. They'll, use, they'll, they'll write the kernel in C++ and then they'll do everything else in Python or Go or something. So yeah, C++ is still viable. I think the most important thing you have to consider when you're looking at any programming language, whether it be C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, PHP, Ruby, Swift, you have to look at the type of work, T-I, not I, T-Y-P-E, the type of work that you want to do. That's such an important thing because C++, C++ programming is a totally different beast than doing JavaScript programming or doing Python programming. It's a totally different thing. Uh, it takes a different mindset, really. It's like a sprinter versus a long distance runner, right? The body of the sprinter is totally different. The training of the sprinter is totally different versus the marathon runner. They're both great athletes. They're both to be respected, but it's a different game. So what you should do, if you're considering C++, look at the type of work that it is and maybe try the Hello World and understand what you got to do. Because with C++, it's a low-level language, meaning it's writing closer to CPU, meaning you got to handle a lot more details. you got to handle memory management. you got to handle... It's just a lot more verbose. It takes a lot more code in C++, in C++ to get certain things done versus say, same, the same task being done in uh, PHP or... Uh, Java or Python or JavaScript, you know, you get the idea. So, again, one of my main, one of my main theses, if you will, one of the main philosophies that I hold after so many, you know, two decades of being a developer, that the language is all very specific. The quality of the language is specific on the task that you have to do. If you want to write a gaming engine, Python would be the worst language to do it in, or one of the worst. C++ would be the way to go. But if you wanted to write web apps real quickly and get into the marketplace and do uh, small business development, you don't want to go C++, you want to go PHP. It kills there. It kills, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. So you have to consider the language based on the type of work what you want to do and the type of mind that you have. For instance, AI programming, which uh, requires uh, lots of math and stuff, not for me. I'm terrible at math. So for guys who are terrible at math, you want to do web app development, you may want to do uh, high-level game development, you, that kind of stuff, uh, business apps, where the math is really not that important. If, you know, it's 
add, subtract, multiply, divide. You know, that's pretty much the limit of, of the math that you need for that kind of work. But when you start getting into AI and machine learning, it's a whole different game. It's uber nerd and it's not something I'm interested in, not something I, I would want to do. Maybe if I put my mind to it, I could. But so if you want to get into AI, and chances are if you're going to do AI, you're going to be writing Python, I think maybe Go. You got to be well aware of it. You got to be doing a lot of math. So be math centric. Again, I'm not one of these guys who PHP sucks or JavaScript's the best or Java's the best or Python. No, it depends what you want to do. The only thing I rip on is uh, Ruby and Ruby on Rails. <laughs> And actually, there's a lot of good things that that framework, Ruby on Rails as a web framework, is actually really good. And Ruby, in terms of the language itself, really good. There's things I really like about it. It's a couple of things I yeah, don't like about it. Uh, but it doesn't run very fast at runtime. And it's very niche. It's well, it's not very niche. It's becoming more and more of a niche language. And I recommend not doing Ruby, Ruby on Rails, because it's, it's falling into niche, meaning it's... it's uh, you're going to have less and less opportunity there. That being said, you know, there's still going to be a lot of legacy Ruby and Rails apps out there. And uh, so you probably get paid, paid big money to do it because there are going to be fewer and fewer Ruby programmers. But, you know, that's a sort of, you see the end of that road down the line, you know, you know maybe 10 years or something. Uh, whereas if you look at uh, Java, C Sharp, PHP, they got such huge install bases in their own right, Python, that it's not going anywhere. So, yeah, anyway, I'll stop going off on one of my tangents again. I, I even forget the point of this video, so I'm going to end it right here. Ciao.